cinematic music was a scientific miracle as amazing as the invention of television, the electric light, or the gasoline engine. It was born in an age when royalty still retained court musicians for their entertainment, and the common man heard most of his music in church. For almost two centuries between its creation and its obsolescence, people of all nations and backgrounds were delighted by music created at the turning of a crank, the pushing of a pedal, of the winding of a string. This was the era of the magnificent music machines. The Swiss started it all around 1750 when watchmakers developed these first tiny music boxes. Though unimposing to look at, these amazing mechanisms were capable of producing intricate melodies. As their popularity spread, music boxes became more and more elaborate as each craftsman improved upon previous design. Soon the Germans and French began to produce their own music machines and the capitals of Europe were filled with the wonder of their mechanical sounds. This one was built during the French Revolution. Its design incorporated a delightful mixture of music and politics, for its tiny orchestra of monkeys poked fun at the pompous French nobility. The majority of early music boxes were operated by means of a cylinder. As the cylinder turned, its pins struck the carefully tuned teeth of a metal comb. Each cylinder was a marvel of meticulous workmanship. Every tiny pin had to be positioned on the cylinder so that not only were the correct notes produced, but they were produced with the exact proper spacing. Soon craftsmen began to add a variety of other sounds, such as bells and tiny drums. Most early music boxes played only one single cylinder's worth of music. But around 1850, mechanisms were developed so that cylinders could be interchanged. And then came the first disc machine, the Symphonian. It was an instant success. Unlike the cylinders, the discs were simple and cheap to manufacture, for they could be stamped out almost like cookies. And equally important, they could be changed automatically. For the first time, the owner of a symphonian could have an almost endless selection of music. In fact, automatic symphonians were later used as coin machines in bars and cafes, kind of a turn-of-the-century jukebox. Double and even triple symphonians soon developed, giving a much richer and fuller sound. But cylinder machines weren't dead yet. Also being developed during this era was the concept of a mechanical orchestra. Giant machines originated in Germany which rivaled live musicians. 
These orchestrions were designed to play serious compositions to the satisfaction of the most discerning and sophisticated audiences. Because they were so expensive to build, they were mainly bought in Europe by wealthy individuals or members of the royalty. The common man, however, might be privileged to find an orchestrion in some fancy beer garden. It was truly astonishing to hear the works of the great composers being played completely automatically. And it sold beer. As impressive as the orchestrion was, it was the band and fair organs that caught the popular ear. Perforated paper rolls or cardboard books made changing of selections both simple and inexpensive. Europeans placed great value on the beauty of sound emanating from their fair organs. Each instrument was so unique in both sound and appearance that it was christened with its very own name, for there were no two alike. Dance organs, such as this giant Saturnus, are still in use today, mainly in Belgium. In America, the small, inexpensive organ had captured the lucrative home market. Literally hundreds of different makes of these roller organs were sold by such companies as Sears and Roebuck, and the crude cylinders sold briskly for as little as 18 cents. Many was the mother who purchased hymns for her roller organ to offset the evil influences of ragtime upon her children. The early 1900s brought a parade of mechanically played instruments one of which was considered among the eight greatest inventions of the decade, the remarkable Violano Virtuoso. Imagine 44 piano notes and one, two, and even three violins, all automatic. But of all the automatic instruments that were enjoyed by millions at the turn of the century, none was more revolutionary than the paper roll piano player. Yes, I said piano player. From 1900 to 1905, the piano player was all the rage. Push it right up to any old existing piano, make with the fancy footwork, and the piano teacher's out on the street looking for a job. Well, the piano player was effective, but a little overweight. So the manufacturers decided to trim down the player and fit it right into the piano. Many families scrimped and saved and did without to possess one of these marvelous pieces of apparatus for the cultural enlightenment of the children. Away from home, the coin-operated pianos were thumping out their ricky-ticky music in railroad stations, lodge halls, saloons, pool parlors, and bawdy houses of the early 20th century. Soon a variety of other instruments were added to the player, the more the better.
automatic music went, the German band was sure to follow. This comedy skit raised quite a few eyebrows. Bill got into the act with automatic minstrel shows. Silent movie theaters swept into popularity, automatic music gained a new dimension. Not every theater could afford a skilled musician to interpret the moods of the screen. The operator of this reproduce had only to choose from music roles labeled Struggle, Chase, or Mysterioso to thrill or amuse the early movie buff. More elaborate machines could add such effects as horse hoops, doorbells, or fire guns all essential ingredients for any Hollywood epic of the day. In 1877, Thomas Edison captured sound with his amazing phonograph, and by the 1920s, radio was public entertainer number one. Together, they supplied the American people with an endless stream and variety of music. Abruptly, the era of the magnificent music machines was over. They belonged to a time when life was slower and pleasures were sicker, a time before bright plastic and glistening chrome. They belonged to a simpler era when people were easily entertained by the tune of an automatic music machine. <laughs> 